All right, let's go to John chapter 2, um, verses 13. Uh, John chapter 2, verses 13. As you know, that we're trying to go through, maybe, hopefully, we'll go through the book, of, the whole book of John, but at least most of it. Okay, so uh, hope you heard the last um, uh, thing we we, was, we cover, um, John chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. So today we're going to look at John chapter 2, um, verses 13. Um, through 25, but mostly probably from John chapter 2, verses 13 through 22. All right, so it reads, verse 13 says, um, this is um, Jesus clears the temple courts. Um, and verse 13 says, when it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, um, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people. In the temple courts, he found people. Let's, let's, let's look at that. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So the Bible said in the temple courts, he found people selling what? Cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at the tables exchanging money, exchanging money for something, exchanging money. Maybe they was buying this. They are exchanging money. They are exchanging money. Or uh, I don't know, maybe it was a change of money, like how uh, if you're America and you go to a, a different country, you have to exchange money to their to their thing. I don't know, but it said there was a change in money. So so when I look at this scripture, when I when I see this, when it says in the temple course, this is what's happening. And, and, and today's church, this is the things that are happening too. If I want to put it in today's timing, by my course. Or buy my book, buy my merchandise, teach you 12 steps to success. These things would um, buy my books, buy my course. These are the things that are they're doing in today's church. Buy my course. Everybody, when you get out of um, service, the sanctuary, some people call it an auditorium. But um, when you get out of the sanctuary and you go into the hallway, they got all kinds of things that they're selling. They got the merch, they got the coats, they got the jackets. I mean, they got the they got the, the shirts, they got the, the pants, they got all the, the 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 church brand merchandise, different things that they're selling. Amen. Which is still the same because the Bible said in the temple courts he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, others sitting at the table exchanging money. Now, this is what happened in verse 15. It says in verse 15. It says, so he made a whip out of the cords and drove all from the temple courts and drove all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. This is what Jesus did. So what you think Jesus think about people selling their books and courses and merchandise and their coaching plan all at the church now this is what this is what happening at today's church not every church does this but a lot of churches it, it, it almost seems like the marketplace like man you go there and you leave service it's like oh you want to buy this oh you want to buy these shoes you want to buy this you want to i want to want to um, join this group that you can make this and it's, it becomes so you be, overwhelmed that it's like is this church is this is the place of we call house of prayer is this a place that that we're supposed to be worshiping god because it seems like we're worshiping everything else it seems like we're, we're trying to come up we're trying to become successful and i'm not saying that they're being successful but it seems like we're we're trying to be money hungry okay so verse 15 let's read verse 15 again read it with me so he made a whip out of a cords and drove all from the temple court. What did he do? He drove all from the temple court. Not just some of them, not just oh, this group. He drove all of them because all of them was doing wrong. Both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. Verse 16 says, verse 16 says, let's read verse 16. It says, to those who sold those, he said, Get these out of here. Stop turning. Look, look at the word. He said, stop. Jesus said, stop. 
So, so, so I'm here for anybody that's listening to this message. And maybe your pastor, maybe you go to a church that they're doing some things that you might not agree with. You might not understand. And I'm not saying leave the church. We're not saying that. We're not saying, oh, when you see this happen, leave that church. They're, they're a false church. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that there's some things we got to be careful how we participate in. That's some things we just got to be like, ah, oh, I'm not sure about that pastor. Ah, oh, I'm not sure about that, oh, the social leader. I'm not sure about that, oh, oh the, the, the leaders of this church. I'm not sure about this. I don't know if I want to participate in this. I'm not saying I'm just going to leave the church because sometimes sometimes we think, oh, we just leave the church and, and that's going to help. And this, it's, We're not saying this is sin, but we're saying... Jesus was not happy about these things that they was doing in the temple courts. He was not happy about what they was doing because now they're turning the house of the Lord to a place of a money changer, things, different things going on, using this platform for their come up. So verse 16 says, to those who sold those, he said, get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. He said, stop turning my father's house to a market. I don't know if you ever been to a market. You ever um, went to one of those markets like outside. I'm talking about like an outside market. Like when they just got like fruits and, and they got vegetables. They got painting and they got clothes they got antique stuff they got different stuff that's going on and they just got tables and you just walk by you can get whatever you want to get but you know you got to pay for it it might be a low price but you got to pay for it. so this is what's happening in the temple course this is what's happening at church this is what's going on so my first point my first point for the day i only got two points i only got two points so we won't be long which we never belong with me. Um, my first point is, what's happening in today's church? What is happening in today's church? That's my first point. What's happening in today's church? Well, I want to talk a little bit. I want to. I looked up some things, and I, or I, I seen some things, and then I know some things. And I just looked it up. I didn't have to look it up. Sometimes it just comes my way. And these are things that I have seen that is happening in today's church. What's happening in today's church? Not everything, but not in every church, but this is what's happening in today's church. And I didn't name all of the things. I just named a few things that I could just get. And, and one of the things that's happening in today's church that I'm seeing a lot, scandals. <laughs> and I'm seeing this a lot, scandals in the church. And when, and when I talk about scandals, and I'm talking about not just scandals with congregation people, not not the members, but with the leadership team. That's a lot of scandals going on with the leadership team. And, and that's what I want to make sure I want to say that. That's just not scandals that's going with congregation. This is what's happening in today's church. A lot of scandals that's happening with leaders. Amen. The next thing that I'm seeing is false prophets. People are mishandling the word of God. People are mishandling the word of God. Amen. False prophets are, are just coming out of a lot lately. Just boy, just 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 a lot of them mishandling the word of God. People are mishandling the word of God. The next thing that I'm seeing, church has become a social networking place. Yeah, I said it. Church has become a social networking place. Hey, um, um you, you, you know, uh, my business got this going on. Uh, uh, my job, we, we can we can connect this way. You can get me a job, I can get you a job. I can get you in this business. You get me in this business. It's become more about that, the success, how to be successful. If this church got these type of successful people or they have influencers 
They have people that got a lot of followers on social media. I want to go to that church. Maybe I can get connected to that person and they can get me on. They can get me selling some products. They can get me. They can help me out. They can, they can help me become successful just like they are. Church has become a social networking place. That's what I'm seeing. Not every church, but I'm seeing this in today's church. The next thing that I, I um, saw is pastors are selling their discipleship class. Pastors are selling discipleship class. Pastors do not want to disciple people anymore. They do not. They want to, not, not all pastors, but they're selling discipleship classes. They're saying, hey, um, if you want to pass, if you want, now, I'm your pastor, and you're saying, "Hey, if you want to be, um, you want some discipleship? You want some? You got to pay for this program. It costs about one hundred twenty dollars. You know, I, you know, join this group, join this Zoom group with a hundred other people being disciple at the same time, and you know, we're going. We're not just shepherding our congregation anymore. Right? We're not just we just we're like, hey, let's put a number price on that. You want my time? You got to put a price on it. Amen. But these are people that you're pastoring, though. And now we're selling our discipleship class. Another thing that I saw um, is turning, we're turning sermons, turning sermons to who they prefer you to vote for. Mm. Let, me, let me say that again. They're turning sermons to who they prefer you to vote for. They're, they're bringing politics into the church in a place of saying, this is who you should vote for. By turning their sermons to who they prefer you to vote for. They're turning their sermons into this. The next thing, and this is the last thing that I want to say on this part or this point, um, what's happening in today's church, is they're selling merchandise that they used to purchase with the people, tithe, and offer. They're selling merchandise that they used to purchase with the people that 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 people that have tied it and gave offering, then they sell it back to them. They're, they're selling merchandise, they're selling products, they're selling t-shirts that you probably already paid for because of your offering, your tie, because they're using that money to fund the, the product, to buy the product, and now they sell it back to you, which you really already gave to it probably. Amen. And so this is what I see that's happening in today's church. Well, there are some churches that are not changing. There are some churches that are staying strong. There are some churches that are staying holy. There are some churches that are staying and not following every trend and not following every secular trend. Amen. So let's, let's, let's go back to the Bible scriptures. Let's go back to verse 17. Verse 17 says, his disciples remember that is written, zeal for your house was consuming. Verse 18 says, then Jews, then the, I mean, the Jews then responded to him, what sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Okay. They asked the question, what sign can you, can you show us to prove your authority? They're talking to Jesus. Show us a sign. What authority do you have? And Jesus answered them, destroy this temple. He's talking about the physical temple right now, the, the infrastructure. He's talking about that. And I will raise it again in three days. Now he's talking about his body, we as the temple now. And he said, they replied, it has taken us 46 years to build this temple. So now, and you're going to raise it in three days. So then, now they don't understand that when he's saying he's speaking of his body. Let's read verse 21. He says, it says, but the temple he had spoken of was his body. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to say right now is we also is a temple. That's a temple infrastructure, the building. But we, the body, is a temple too. So, verse 22, let me just read verse 22 before I give you my second point. After he, raised, after he was raised from the dead, 
His disciples recall what he had said. Then they believe the scripture and the words that Jesus has spoken. Let's go back to verse 21. He said, but the temple he was spoke that he had spoken of was his body. So my second point that I want you to get, which is the title of the Bible study. What's happening in your temple? What is happening in your temple? Not not the, the building temple. We talked about what's happening in the building, but what is happening in your body? Because we are supposed to be a temple. Amen. I want to read a reference scripture. Um, first Corinthians, first Corinthians 6, 19 to 20. First Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. I want to read a reference scripture. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? Huh? Let me just read that part again. I want you to hear that. Do you not know your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you whom you have received from God? Who is in you is what you have received from God. The Holy Spirit is supposed to be in you. And the next part of the scripture says, you are not your own. You know, I hear these pastors, I hear preachers, I hear people, these little influencers and these um, Christian influencers try to say, be you. But the Bible says you are not your own. You just can't be you. You are not your own. The verse 20 says you were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. You just can't be you. You just can't do anything to your body. It's important. The Bible says it's important. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. We are supposed to honor God with our body. We just can't do anything to our body and say, oh, we're going we gonna to eat this and we're going to um, uh, take this type of stuff, put it in our body. It's important. Some of the things that I want to um, bring out points in this um, the second point is I want to talk about it's important to know what's dwelling in your temple. It's important to know what's dwelling in your temple. You need to know what's dwelling in your temple. You cannot allow everything to dwell in your temple. I know you're on social media. You're scrolling through and you've got to be careful what you're, you're, you're scrolling through because well, what you're scrolling through because at the end of the day, that can dwell in your temple. You can see something and you'd be like, oh, man, wait a minute. What what the world? Wait a minute. How? Do... And all of a sudden, it dwells in your temple. And now it has discouraged your temple. And now it has gotten your body, your temple somewhere else. It's gotten your mind somewhere else. It's important to put the right things in your temple. And I'm not just talking about just spiritual. Physically, too, it's important to take care of your body. It's important to 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 put the right thing, the right food. I understand we want to eat all kind of stuff, but sometimes you got to eat the right food at the right time. You got to you got to you can't be eating all kind of junk food all the time during the day, all through the night. You have to put the right things in your temple. Recently, I've have had a few heart scares in the past few years. And every time it happens, I'm trying to make sure I'm eating the right food and exercise, which I should be doing that already. I should be already exercising. I should already be taking care. But sometimes I, I don't. Sometimes I don't exercise. Sometimes I'm like, I'm busy. I'm working. I'm going, doing this and doing that. I'm watching the kids. I'm, I'm a husband. I'm a father. I got to work. got to do this. And sometimes I don't take care of of the things that I need to. Yes, sometimes we, we we like, oh, I'm reading my word. I'm putting the right word in me. I'm reading, but I gotta make sure I take care of myself physical too. It's important, it's it's important to take care of your physical and your spiritual. Amen. You know that some people only take care of the physical, but they're not taking care of the spiritual. It's important for both. It's important, amen. Is this this gym? I, I, I'm giving a shout out to this gym, and I, every time I drive by it, it's, it's the gym is called the Fitness Temple. They know it's important for the fitness. 
But it's not just important for the fitness, it's important for the spiritual too. So what is happening in your temple? You need to ask your question. You need to look yourself in the mirror and say, what is happening in my temple? Yeah, I know what's happening in today's church. I know what's happening in today's church building. I, I understand that. But what is happening in your temple? What is happening in your? You can control what's happening in your temple, your body that I'm speaking of. Maybe you can't control what's happening in today's church, the church building and all those things. But you can't control what is happening in your temple, your body. Amen. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the word that you have given, Lord God. Lord God, let us take care of our temple, Lord God. And Lord God, let's continue to pray for the church as a whole, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for this word that you have given on today, Lord God. Lord God, I pray that it would touch somebody wherever they at, Lord God. And God, you would do it, Lord Jesus. You will help us in our walk daily. We thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.